Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We'd like to go ahead and invite you to grab your Bible, a pen, pencil, some paper, and your cup of coffee and get ready to listen to God's Word. Hey everybody, we hope that you're having a great time so far in our online worship experience. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Why don't you go ahead right now in the comment section and let your dad know publicly how much you love him. Do you guys love your dads today? Do we love them? Thank you so much. We're thankful for you and uh, we're glad that you're part of this church family. And today is a great day. I'm also excited to let our church family know that on July 12th, we will be resuming in-person gatherings here on our High Point campus. Are you guys excited for that? Come on, it's gonna be great. Hey, please be on the lookout for more information and we'll be sharing more details of what that looks like right now in this current phase. We're preparing all of our team leaders, our volunteers, so that when you resume, we come back on the 12th, it'll be a great experience for all. And so please uh, be on the lookout. We'll be sharing lots more details here in the coming days and weeks as we prepare for that date. We want to kind of give you an update for that. Today we're going to be in uh, James chapter 2 verses 14 through 17. So if you have your Bibles, you can open them up to James chapter 2. And we're going to be continuing on in our series, Extreme Faith. And uh, I believe that God is going to speak to us in a powerful way this morning as we continue in the series. Here's what the scriptures say. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of them says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things they need for their body, what good is that? So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Let's pray together. God, I pray that over these next few moments that you would help me communicate clearly. God, that as we open up your word, God, that you would speak to us directly. God, we need your Holy Spirit. I pray that you would anoint me and so that every person can receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm a weird person. I thoroughly enjoy working in my yard. And I'm not quite like my father-in-law to where I am obsessed with the lines and the lawn. I just like to work with my hands. You know what I'm talking about? Like I enjoy to get outside and pull weeds. I know I'm a freak. I, I like to just make sure that, that everything is, is, is in order. But I have some issues in my yard this year. In fact, I have a couple of trees that are giving me some problems. Can anybody identify with me today? And I have some issues because I got a tree in the front of my house that is either dormant or dead, and it's driving me bananas. I've labeled it as dormant until the HOA tells me that it's dead. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm up a creek without a paddle because it's gonna be expensive to replace it. And this tree, it's not producing anything that it should. In fact, every tree should produce a pine needle or, or leaves of some sort, but this tree is stubborn because it's either dormant or dead. And the same is true with our faith that I believe that some, some of us in this season, our faith may, has gone, may have gone into dormancy and dormant because the lack of availability for community. Possibly your faith is dormant because the struggles that you faith. Maybe some of us, our faith is dead, but today my prayer is that our faith would not be dead, but it would come alive. And that my prayer for our church and everybody watching today would realize that our faith is not something just to be rooted, but our faith is something that has to be fruitful. In fact, Jesus has called us to have a rooted and faithful faith. And, and Jesus desires for us to grow in our faith. And, and we have to understand that an active faith is a fruitful faith. An active faith is a fruitful faith. Why is James in this passage saying that faith is dead without works? Let's think about this. James is writing to a group of people who are likely in house churches dispersed all over the place. James is writing a, a, a letter to them that will be circulated from small house church to house church. We've been this way for a while now, for several months. And, and he's writing this letter and, and he's writing to these people who some of them are wealthy. Some of them have means, but there are also people in these gatherings who are, who are poor. They show up in torn and tattered, tattered clothes. They show up hungry. And in this culture and day, the poor were treated differently than the wealthy. 
In fact, they would be pushed to the back of the room, forced to stand while the wealthy would be able to sit in seats and observe and participate in the service. And James is calling this out in this passage. He's saying, you know what? Don't just tell them to go, the people who are poor in the back, tell them to go be filled, be warm, and, and be filled with the Spirit. No. James is saying, hey, listen, let us see what you say. Let me see what you believe by what you, don't just say words, but let me see your words. Let me see the faith that you have because our faith is more than our words. It must be fruitful because here's what we know is that we know that our faith that is fruitful, man, it multiplies. It's powerful. Now, some of you may be conflicted because we think about uh, Paul's writing in 2 Corinthians where he goes and talks about how we're not saved by our works, but by faith alone. Are these two things a contradiction? Is, is Paul right saying that it's just faith alone, it's faith by itself? Or, or, and, then, and then we see James in this moment where he's saying, man, your faith is dead without works, so which is right? Well, actually, they're not in contradiction to each other. They're, in fact, in support of one another. See, faith in Jesus is the foundation, but our action is the fruit. Our, 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 re, our response to what we believe. James is writing saying, don't just have faith. Let me see your faith. Faith in Jesus does save you. That is the only way to be made right with God, to believe that Jesus is the son of God. But a fruit, the fruit of your faith should be a, a direct correlation of what you believe. Galatians 6, 7 says this. It says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Paul writes Galatians. What is Paul saying? He's saying that God can't be fooled by your spiritual pretenses. God is not fooled by what you say and then you do something different. God can't be fooled. He can't say, gotcha, God. I, I say it on Sunday, but I don't live it on Monday. He's actually saying what you say needs to line up with what you actually do. Whatever you plant in your mind, in your heart, should be a reflection with your life. A couple of summers ago, in, in our flower bed in front of our house, we had these little things starting to sprout up. And they started to grow quickly and the leaves started to get very large and it started to kind of swallow around. I was lazy for a little bit. It's before I loved my yard like I do now. And, and, and it started to swallow up around the, the flowers. And I forgotten that a pumpkin had been placed directly in front of that flower bed this season. And I, you know what? I hate squirrels because a squirrel had burrowed its way down into that pumpkin and seeds were all over the place. Here I am like trying to get, I'm trying to feed multiple babies. It doesn't even make sense how many diapers we've flying through. And I'm trying to get all these seeds out of the, the garden and trying to get all these, trying to take care of all this stuff. But some of the seeds, they, they kind of made their way down into the soil. And I didn't realize that before you knew it, we had a little miniature pumpkin patch. It was cute. We tried to transfer it to a place to where they could really grow, but it all died eventually. There you go. That's my green thumb. <laughs> Killing trees and pumpkins. It's my skill. Here's the point. Whatever you allow in and around your life will eventually produce something of significance. So if you're allowing people who are going to impact you in a negative way, eventually you will produce whatever you put in. Whatever you allow into your mind and your heart will eventually take seed and produce something that you don't like. Eventually, if we separate ourselves from faith so far, our faith it becomes dead eventually. Why? Because faith without works is dead. Whatever we allow to take root in our life will eventually produce. What James is ultimately saying in this moment is saying whatever you're planting will show through your actions. And if your faith is not fruitful, it's dead. So if you are planting the word of God, if you are watering it through prayer and letting the light of Jesus nourish it, your faith will be fruitful. I know some of uh, the Christian world in, in, in our day and age have fallen into the idea that in, in the political correctness of our culture that my faith is for me. Listen, I think that you are partly right, but mostly wrong. <laughs> Let's think about this. What about the Great Commission? Jesus is talking to the disciples in Matthew 28. And he goes to tell them, he says, I have all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make what? 
disciples. He's saying to go. It's a challenge to go. He says, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It is a command to go. Luke 19 says, for the Son of Man came to seek and save what? The lost. We weren't created just for us. We are created to serve. We were created to make a difference. We were, we were created to produce something that matters with our life. No matter your skill set, we all can be fruitful with our faith. That's why we know Jesus, so that all may know. So that all may know. That's why we do Waymaker. That's why we, we, we give to missionaries all over the world. That's why we advance the mission locally. That's why we raise up future Christian leaders so that all may know we have been commanded to be fruitful with what we've been given. Can I share some great stuff with you? During this season, not only have we been able to support every missionary that we, 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 we've done, but we've gone above and beyond. Some crazy stats for you. Boxes of Hope, we've given 344 boxes of hope away over the last several months. That equates to $15,000 worth of groceries away to families in need. Isn't that amazing? Come on, what, it's amazing. Not only this, you think about 6,000 meals that have been given away through drive through dinners over the last six weeks or so. We're gonna continue on through the month of June. You want to hear what's even crazier than that? Boxes of Hope, man hours, 800 hours volunteered over the last few uh, months. Amazing. You know what's even crazier? drive through dinners, 4,700 hours given away. Come on, just amazing. This, this church, when the times get tough, this church steps up. I'm thankful to be part of a church that is not only just says we believe and says we care, but we step up when it matters. And that's not me, that's you. And I'm thankful for all that God has done. What's amazing is that we didn't come to you and say, hey, you know what, we, we, we got a need now. It's because you believed in advance. You didn't wait for the problem to come. You were prepared before the problem came. And that's how good our God is to prepare us in advance for what he has set before us. God has done a miraculous thing through this church during the season. And I believe that it's just a taste of what God has for us in the future. I pray that the fruit that this church produces is even greater, that we would multiply leaders in churches so that we may reach all the nations of the world. We must produce fruit, not just with our time, not with our money, but with also our lives. In Matthew 7, Jesus is speaking the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way that they act. Verse 20, he goes on to say the same thing, basically. He says, yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, you can also identify people by their actions. Who's Jesus talking about? Jesus is warning people about false leaders, false teachers. But I think the same is true for what James is saying. He's saying whatever people do, if their actions don't align, do they even really believe? Are they really who they say they are? See, Jesus doesn't want our lip service. He wants our lives. So what about the good people who do good things? Man, there are good people who do good things. Deeds of loving and ser service do not substitute our, our love for Christ. In fact, they're a verification of our faith in Christ. L let me break it down a little bit different. My kids love dogs, and I don't want a dog. I, dogs stink. They pee and poop everywhere. They, they bite furniture. Can anybody identify but you've been, I've been set free from that in Jesus' name. I like dogs, cats, we won't even talk about. You know what I'm saying? Oh, there's no awe in this house. <laughs> but instead of getting a dog, you know what we got them? We got them stuffed animals. They sleep with the stuff. I'm not even joking. Dead serious. We got them stuffed animals. They've named them. Both of them are named Bella. But it's not a substitute. They always know what's even worse. I feel so bad because uh, sometimes I actually feel guilty about this, that they watch shows about dogs, they carry around their dogs, but I'm never getting them a dog because I, even though I try to give them a substitute, it doesn't satisfy them. The same is true if you've ever baked before. Any bakers here? It's like trying to use uh, olive oil in place of, of regular oil when you're making brownies. Instead of a nice, sweet treat, you're going to have an Italian dish on your hand. You know what I'm saying? Some things just can't be substituted for. 
And our good deeds are a verification of our faith, not a substitute for our faith. And what you've got to understand is that our lives, you can't just say, I'm going to do good things and good things are enough. Come on. No, we have faith in Jesus as the foundation, but the fruit of my life should produce something that matters. So our faith, what is the produce of the, what's the result of this? What are the fruits of the spirit? Love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. My prayer for today is that everyone in our church would have faith in Jesus. Maybe your faith has gone dormant. Maybe it's dead. But all things can be made new with Christ. Even if it's been dormant for a long time, you've been going through the the motions of a lip service, but God today wants to transform your life like never before. Wherever you're watching from, even if you're in this room with a small group of people, can I just tell you today, faith is the foundation of following Jesus, but the fruit of the substance of your life is the display of your faith. And I pray that we would come alive to know our full potential when we follow Christ, that we produce fruit that lasts, and not only lasts, but would make an impact in our community, in our world. I know that some of you today watching, you're saying, you know what, I, I, I'm a good person. I do good things, but I'm still far from God. I don't have faith in Jesus. Well, God sent his only son, Jesus, to this earth to die for our sins while we were still sinners. And he paid the price for our life so that we may be made right with God. That is the faith factor. And today in this moment, I want to give you an opportunity to follow Jesus. Wherever you're watching from, if you identify with that, say, you know what? I, I do good things. Or maybe you, you once followed God and you say, no, I've fallen way far away and I want to follow Jesus again. The Bible tells us that if we believe, if we have faith, that he is the son of God, that he came, he lived, he died on the cross and was risen again, that we will be saved. We have to confess it with our mouths. And that's why we're going to pray out loud. If you are watching right now and you want to give Jesus your life, if you want to be forgiven of your sins, you want a new journey, a Genesis with Jesus today, you just need to confess and say, God, I need you. Would you pray with me? And those watching online, would you pray out loud wherever you're watching from? Dear Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. I ask for your forgiveness. I commit my life to you. I believe that you came, that you lived, that you died and rose again. And I'll follow you every day of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give a round of applause to those who are watching. Hey, listen, right now in the comment section, there are some links to where you can click or you can text uh, the word journey to 74574 that we want to help resource you and help you along the way. And for the rest of us, let God awaken our lives again. Let our faith come out of being dormant so that we may produce fruit that lasts, that impacts this world around us. Church, we love you. I can't wait to be with you in person in a few weeks. And I truly believe that the best is yet to come. We'll see you soon.